And our first storyteller that I'd like you to welcome to the stage is the wonderful and illustrious Mark Dixon, um, famous locally for yurt and your environmental road trip, but also for his most recent trip to COP21 uh, in Paris, um, and uh, as GBA's videographer for the Inspire Speaker Series. So let's welcome Mark Dixon to the stage. It was 2 a.m. and I had two hours left before I needed to leave for my very first interview ever. And I had removed two screws from my $1,200 audio recorder thinking I could fix it because it was broken that night. And two screws turned into 10 screws, turned into 50 screws all across the floor of an audio recorder that I had spent a significant chunk of change on, and I barely even knew how to use, let alone knew if I could fix in time for this interview. And it wasn't just an ordinary interview. This was the first, and it was with an important person, Lois Wolk, who happened to be a California State Assemblywoman. I thought this would be my, my big launch interview because it wasn't just Lois, it was actually the first interview on a project that ultimately became Yurt, which you referenced earlier. This was the test run. First interview of the test run of that road trip. The pre-road trip road trip to see if I liked doing that. To see if the universe was on my side in this endeavor for which I left my cushy job in Silicon Valley and started spending ungodly amounts of money so that I could help the planet find its way. This was not the sign that I was looking for from the universe. <laughs> it seemed like more the universe was telling me, be careful, you might get screwed. <laughs> but I persevered, and I put all those screws back, and lo and behold, that thing worked and has worked ever since. And, and then I proceeded on my trip, the pre-trip trip. This trip was scheduled to go up through Eugene, Oregon, I was going to interview a guy named Ian, and uh, Ian worked at uh, Sequential Biofuels. It's like a Whole Foods meets a Sunoco, solar panels on everything, Whole Foods in the like Whole Foods food in the in the gas station. It was amazing. Then I was going to go on up to Portland, and then I was going to go up through Bellingham and interview a guy named Atul, who who runs his own biofuels company up there. And then I was going to turn around in Vancouver and then come all the way back down, turn that extraordinary video, I hoped, into a trailer, which would become the first trailer for the Yurt project ever. I look back on it and I cringe, but this was brand new and I was ready to make it amazing, I hoped. So I rolled on up to Eugene and I got out of the car and I found Ian and he toured me all around and I ended up, I loved it, I really loved it. I, I got my B-roll right and I, I interviewed him and learned all about this gas station and got all these great shots and then I knew, once that interview ended though, I knew now came the hard part because I didn't feel like I was smart enough or funny enough to get people to watch my videos without having something extra, something special. And that special thing that I was going to try to include was people on the street interviews. But I had never interviewed a person on the street and I didn't think that I was good at it. I didn't know, but I was not excited about the prospect. I was excited about the prospect of people watching my videos though. So these things clashed in me as I ran back to my car and sought refuge, trying to force myself back out of the car to go interview the next person who came out of that gas station. But I sat in my car for probably, I don't know, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 minutes. Minutes turned into more minutes, and I was probably there for 45 minutes doing that thing, you know, where you count down from 10 to zero, and you say at zero, you're just gonna go off the diving board. I was doing that, but I did it over and over and over again without actually getting out of my car. <sighs> Finally, one of those 10 through zeros worked. Three, two, one. I stepped out of my car and just forced myself to walk to the door and then wait for the next person to come out. They did, friendly looking person, walked out, smiled at me and I said, I'm doing this road trip documentary project about the environment. Would you be willing to talk to me about environmental issues for a couple minutes on camera for my video project? And the guy said, 
sure, I actually, I know a couple things about this gas station. I was like, oh yeah, really? Why is that? He said, well, I, I run a biofuels company. And I said, oh, really, you run a biofuels company? That's cool. I, I, um, well, where are you from? And, and he said, well, I'm, I'm actually from Bellingham. And, and so I thought, I thought the same thing. It's like, what? You're from Bellingham. But I couldn't remember his name. Like, my, my head is like a spreadsheet, but the spreadsheet is on Google, and it's not in my brain. And so I'm like, I think I'm going to interview this guy. And so I just sheepishly said, I, am I going to interview you in a week? And sure enough, that was Atul Deshmane from Whole Energy from Bellingham, who happened to be visiting sequential biofuels in Eugene one whole week before I was supposed to interview him. I had never met him. I had no idea that they were connected, but there I was, the first interview. After 45 minutes in the car, I must have seen five, six, seven, eight people come out of that gas station I could have interviewed, but because of my delay, boom. That was the sign from the universe <laughs> that I was looking for. And that, buoyed by that success, I, I traveled to Pittsburgh where my sister said, Mark, come live with me for free while you work on your film. I said, yes. I moved here, lived with my sister for free. And as the days approached the launch of the official big yurt, your environmental road trip, I got a call. We were just two days out from the, about two days out from that, from that launch party. I got a call from a Sierra Club member who said, we'd like to invite you to an upcoming event. It's the launch of this project called Yurt, your environmental road trip. <laughs> That's so great. <laughs> That's my project. <laughs> I'm so excited. <laughs> Thank you for calling me about my project. Again, a sign from the universe. But this wasn't just any old sign from the universe. This was a, I was confronted directly by an act of community, a community engagement. It wasn't like a random serendipitous thing. It was like somebody sitting down and doing something that others consider to be potentially mundane. And it moved me almost to tears. I had to tell everybody, and then you all, years later, that this person called me up to invite me to my own event. And so then I traveled all on the yurt trip, 50 states, one year, came back with all kinds of wisdom just packed into my brain. And, and then I've been working in the Pittsburgh community since then. But that Sierra Club incident, that wonderful boost from the universe has stuck with me since then. And I realized, though, in reflecting over it, that maybe as we're pursuing those sustainable, just, vibrant communities that we all know and love, we want to see, maybe, just maybe, we could be moved by signs from the universe, sure. But I think we might move together faster and farther and together if we become the signs from the universe to each other. Thanks. Woo! That's a good story, Mark. Any words you want to give me about how you feel about Mark's story? Woo! Woo! Anything else? Ow. Ow. Man, I think Christian just wants me to say, repeat what he says. <laughs> Anything else? I think you nailed the ending, Mark. <laughs> nice job. And maybe, maybe what Mark just did was gave you a sign. <laughs> that he's a great storyteller and that we're going to have a whole bunch of other people come and tell good stories with him.